we're going to talk about the divisions of the nervous system. And when I say divisions, we need to divide up the nervous system um, both structurally, so anatomical divisions. Um, this is going to be like the incoming signals, the brain, the spinal cord, um, the peripheral nerves, all that stuff. Um, we also are going to talk about functional divisions. So this is how, and these are sometimes gonna be related, um, how things function. So sensory systems, motor systems, um, autonomic and somatic. So we've got some different ways we're going to divide up the nervous system. I'm gonna start by some, some anatomy. So the nervous system, right? Here it is, central nervous system. That is the brain and the spinal cord. Those are the two components of the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is going to be the peripheral nerves. That's all these things here. Um, I'm gonna, okay, no, yeah, we'll do that first. And what are these little bulbs of things here? These little balls are called ganglia. Um, ganglia are cell bodies, collections of cell bodies in the PNS. Where are cell bodies in the CNS? Actually, both these places. Um, it's going to be in gray matter. Is what it's going to be called. That's where cell bodies are located. Um, in the brain, it's also going to be called nuclei, different than a cell, cell nucleus. Um, so brain nuclei are collections of cell bodies um, that are gray matter in, in the brain. And we'll see this a lot more when we get into anatomy of the brain. We look at certain brain regions like the hypothalamus, the thalamus, those all contain collections of cell bodies. Those are brain nuclei. Okay. So we got our cell bodies. Um, so what are peripheral nerves? These are um, bundles of axons. So remember, we've got one single, um, let me actually draw one where there is one here. Here's a cell body in, in the central nervous system. It's going to have an axon that comes out, and some of them are going to synapse earlier than the finger, but let's say it's the finger. Um, these nerves, I can't draw them thin enough, right? But they're actually bundles of a bunch of different axons all together next to each other. Um, we'll see a cross section of, an, of a nerve, um, but I do want you to, to just get that in your head. Nerves are bundles of axons and peripheral nerves this would be in the PNS. The peripheral nerves um, could either be spinal, so coming from the spinal cord, or coming from the, bra the brain, so cranial nerves. Two types of nerves, which are bundles of axons. Where are axons in the central nervous system? They're there. They're not as long, right? That should be um, like intuitive. There are some that are long. Some axons go all the way from up and down the spinal cord, but within the brain, there are what are called tracks. So tracks are um, white matter. These are collections, and I wish I had color coded this. Not collections, bundles, collections isn't wrong, but bundles of axons in the CNS are tracks. Um, sometimes in the spinal cord, they're also called columns. So let's color code this quick. So pink is going to be our cell bodies. Cell bodies, cell bodies, cell bodies. Actually, I shouldn't circle all of the brain because it's not all of the brain, right? It's just the gray matter. Then we've got our axons. Axons are going to be this color. Yeah. 
cell body axon will draw some nerves, some neurons. Neurons are different than nerves. It's hard. Okay, that's our basic anatomy. Now we are going to kind of switch gears, bring it together later to kind of know, learn what we already know about stimulus response pathways. So could you draw a diagram to show how a painful stimulus causes a response? Of course you could. This is a stimulus response pathway. So what's going to, this is going to be our stimulus. This is going to be our receptor. This is going to be our integrator our target and our response. This is not gonna be feedback, but got the same components. So here, you can do this, right? Painful, pain. So let's say a like sharp object, a pin. What detects that? Pain receptors. These are called nociceptors. We We'll get into sensory systems more, um, but that's what they're called. They are like receptors that are in various places. Just say in your hand, right? You're touching a sharp a pin. Um, there are tactile receptors that are designed to detect pain. And those are going to carry information. Literally there are little, let's have this be our, um, free nerve ending, let's just say it is in the, in the skin. That information is gonna be carried via the nervous system, sensory nervous system. We're also gonna be calling that afferent to the integrator. What's the integrator? Someplace in the CNS. So that means brain or spinal cord. Um, there actually are spinal reflexes that occur, like you touch something sharp and occur without conscious thought, right? So this could be even in the spinal cord without processing in the brain. Target, what's the target? You touch a sharp thing, what needs to happen? You need to move your hand, right? So the target is gonna be some skeletal muscle. If it's your finger, probably something in your finger. Yeah, that muscle is going to contract. All right, same idea would occur with a hot object. The only difference here would be, um, that would be thermal receptors. Oh, one more thing I didn't draw here. So this actually, actually this is called the input signal. You know that word. We have an output signal here too. We talked more about the output signal because for the endocrine system, that is often a hormone. It, it is a hormone. So like parathyroid hormone, insulin, those are output signals that have an effect on the target. In this case, the output signal is a neuron. A neuron that go, comes from the CNS and is going to synapse directed onto the muscle that needs to contract. Awesome, huh? All right. So your book goes through this as well and has an example with um, a little bit more of a complex example. And so I do want to introduce this here. Um, actually, here I go. Okay, so complex motor response. This is an overview of um, something that uh, kind of quite a bit that we'll come back to. So in addition to going to the spinal cord. Let's say that's our integrator. You also can have information travel from there up to the brain. In the case of a hot stimulus, thalamus. The thalamus is a um, kind of a gating relay center that then process, um, passes this information on to the cortex. And this is how then you're aware of the fact that you just touched something painful or hot. Um, sometimes this might require 
doing something about it. So I actually might bring up this picture from the book since I don't have one ready. Um, your book talks about, you know, if you turn on water, it's too hot and you have to respond to that. In that case, that's not just a simple reflex, but it is requiring you to turn off the water. So let's actually look at this right here. Turn that off. So here is testing the water and the process of so sensory endings. Here is our, oh, I lost my draw, drawing. Yeah. Here is the um, sensor input signal, the integrator. In this case, because it's a more complex pathway, this information needs to be sent to the brain um, and travel in interneurons. Interneurons are in between other neurons. We'll go through more later these different upper and lower, lower motor neurons as well. So once the information travels up here, it's going to be processed, come back down as a motor signal. Upper and lower motor neurons are different steps of the pathway. Upper first coming from the, the cortex, like the motor cortex. Lower motor neuron is then going to be the one that's the output signal to cause the hand to do something. So it gets a little more complex in terms of the, the pathways. Um, and we'll go through some of the stuff in the brain there. Um, if you want to show, so here, here is what I wanted to show. So the motor response is then having to turn off the water if it's too hot. Um, that is requires processing in the central nervous system. So that's when that requires that going to the thalamus, cortex, interneurons, and then out through the upper and motor, upper and lower motor neurons. Okay, back to here. Last thing we're gonna do in order to categorize um, the division of the nervous system is categorize visceral and somatic and all this other stuff I told you about that I haven't really told you about yet. So I'm gonna do a kind of flow chart here. We've got the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. We've already talked about the components that make up each of these. Um, this, the physical components are the brain and spinal cord, peripheral nervous system, it's sensory. Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to write that yet. I will write that in a minute. Ganglia and nerves. But the PNS, we're also going to divide into these functional divisions. That's what I was getting at. Here we go. Two other ways of dividing it are sensory and motor. The most obvious one we've talked about so far um, is motor in terms of skeletal muscles. So this is somatic. When you either consciously or sometimes can be a reflex, knee-jerk re reflex, move your skeletal muscles this is the somatic nervous system. If it's moving, it's motor. The other way you're, you have a motor system is the one that's a little bit less intuitive. This is your visceral, also called autonomic. So these are all the non-conscious pathways that keep you alive. Regulate heart rate, breathing, sweating, pupil dilation, digestive processes, so much stuff. Um, there are two divisions of the autonomic nervous system. I'll primarily call it autonomic. Um, the word visceral relates to the viscera. So this is regulating all your visceral organs like heart, digestive system, glands. So it's sympathetic and parasympathetic. We have a whole chapter on these, one of my favorite chapters, but that, This is rest and digest. 
this is fight or flight. So they're kind of um, opposing systems to keep your body um, in balance, but not equilibrium, keep your body functioning. So whole chapter on that's coming. Sensory, we that's sensing the world. The world could either be inside the body or outside. Um, and so we're also have this divided by somatic and visceral. This division is gonna be less um, talked about. So we've got a whole chapter on this. This is a separate chapter. This chapter we've already done, right? Um, we're gonna have a whole chapter, another, another one on disanatomy. For the sensory, we kind of do it all at once. Somatic is going to be like touch um, that you're conscious of typically, special senses are kind of a part of this. So sensory system from vision, hearing, all that stuff. Um, and that's opposed to visceral, which is um, receiving information like about heart rate, um, about levels of various things in the body, um, all kinds of internal organ responses. Digestion is gonna be a big one. We'll talk less about this, but I do want you to know that this is a part of our sensory system it is monitoring internal stuff via the nervous system. Okay, I think that's what I got for these divisions, an overview of these. Learning check, answer each of these. So this one, um, choose which terms apply to these three questions and answer these. All right, 